We're back with Joe Froster giving parental advice to our parents in the audience, whether it's here or, you know, back at home. So next up is a video message. Hi, Meredith. My name's Helen. I live in Westport, Connecticut. I'm a big fan of the show and a really big fan of Super Nanny Joe Frost. I have a question for her. How do I stop my five-year-old daughter from sucking her thumb? She's been doing it since she was a baby, and now it's time to stop. I really hope you can help me. Thanks a lot. Bye. That's a good one. I had that with one of my kids as well. It is. You yeah. just duct tape it completely and then you forget about it. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's very, very common, obviously. Yeah. And sometimes we can see thumb sucking um, in children who are emotionally very immature mm -hmm. and it happens when they're slightly older. But the most important thing about thumb sucking is that you, you really can't stop that behaviour, but you can encourage the child as they become more conscientiously aware around the age of sort of like six, seven years old. So don't make it such a big topic that actually you create more stress and they continue to suck their thumb more they're stressed yeah right so, so you, don't you don't say stop sucking your thumb oh well, no um. you just gently use your hand okay so if you're sitting down on the sofa with them and you see it happen you would just gently move their hand away okay without having to even say anything just to move their hand away and to recognize when it does happen because you can replace that with maybe a blankie that they end up just fiddling with or sometimes they do it with the tags of their clothes, right. but that does happen when children are hungry, when they're tired, when they're feeling stressed. So if you can recognise the patterns of when that happens, it also allows you as a parent to really decrease what that stress may yeah. be. So it's a really good indicator as well. Sometimes it's for soothing, but when it increases, sometimes there's a problem there emotionally that you can actually help overcome, so it helps the child. So you don't automatically grow out of it then if there's an underlying problem. Well, I know adults that still suck their yeah, thumb yeah. and they're consciously aware of it and they love the sensation of their thumb mm -hmm. right on the top of their palate, oh. you know? Okay. Um, but you want to encourage by doing, you know, that, gentle, gentle. Hand, that yeah. gentle hand move. As soon as you are aggressive, you know, and you're like, stop doing that, it's annoying me. It creates more stress for the child yeah, and, and you really don't want to do that. Exactly, right? perpetuates the problem. We have Absolutely. an audience member that has a question. Where are you and what do you want to ask Joe? Hi. What's your name? Hi, Kim. Hi, Kim. Hi, Meredith. Hi, Joe. Hi. So my son is in the preteen years. Yeah. He's great. He's a really good kid. But when we have a disagreement, he shuts down or gives me the whatever. And I just kind of want to know how to deal with that. Whatever. That, oh, it's annoying. How do you respond when he's like, whatever? Well, sometimes I say whatever back. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so one of you's got to be the adult, right? I'm banking on you. <laughs> banking on you. The most important way of understanding how you get the most out of your conversations with your teenagers is to check your own behaviour, right? Yes. So if you start to get an attitude, and if you start to show anger at the way he's responding, then basically you've got two kids, right? Yes. You've got two kids in the playground trying to battle it out, and now you've got a power struggle. The importance of having this conversation is to push through, OK? So when you're having a conversation that he ideally may not want to talk about, OK, stay put. Stay put and say, actually, I don't appreciate the attitude. I'm trying to have an adult, mature conversation with you that I believe that actually you're capable of having. So can we just get past this and ask him questions that make him have to think? I want parents to ask questions that have their kids thinking, OK? So they can like give us question? a response. Not questions that are just like a yes or a no. So many parents get into that sort of, you know, Questionnaire of, so was school good? Yeah. So did you hang out with your friends and have fun? Yeah. So did you do this? No. You know, they're, block, they're blockers of conversations. So when you're talking about something that's important, make sure that your attitude is in check. Tell him and address the attitude and say, I don't find that respectful. Can we have this meaningful conversation? Because it is important. But have it in a space where the two of you can actually enjoy that conversation. Is it a convenient time? Sometimes it's not, but the conversation has to happen. So think about where you are as well, so that you can disarm your son so that he doesn't come straight to the conversation with a suit of armour on, ready to give you whatever, because it's a conversation blocker. So you want to keep your door open all the time. When you set the example, he has to come to the table with a mature attitude. Thank you.